Hi, Jack and Steve. Thank you for joining our program today. Well, um, I know FTI purchased international risk three years ago. Can you tell us why you made such a decision for the acquisition and do you think the acquisition was successful? Yes, our formula around the world has been to associate ourselves with someone who is local, who has impeccable reputation, has great contacts and great clients, and we couldn't have picked a better person with Steve. And now the game plan going forward is to add our other services as appropriate in this area of the world. Well, FTI was uh, probably the only partner we were looking at. Um, we'd reached a certain size in Asia. Uh, we, we, we were pretty efficient in the markets we were in, but we, we really couldn't go global without a huge amount of capital. Um, and we recognized that FTI was, is and was truly global and is and was growing. Uh, so again, it made, a, it made an ideal partner. And again, the service suite that FTI had was complementary, not competitive. So in fact, it just made a lot of sense for both sides. How did the financial crisis affect your business? Well, the financial crisis was an accelerant to our business. It's really uh, our mission is to help our clients defend and protect and even enhance their wealth. And there's never been an attack on wealth such as this since the Great Depression. So every one of our businesses has been integrally involved in everything from the Madoff situation to the Lehman Brothers to um, the automotive crisis and just around the world globally, all of our segments have been very busy dealing with these issues. From my point of view, I'd say that it also caused us to change our focus a little. Uh, a lot of our business is based on deals, continues to be based around deals, but our focus then switched very quickly, unfortunately, to um, fraud work and asset searching, which again were, 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 were byproducts or, or downstream consequences of the, uh, of the crisis. And we spent a lot of time in the last year or so do, doing fairly extensive uh, asset searches. I know FTI was involved in the Madoff scams investigation. Can you tell us a little bit about this case? Please? Yes, well, obviously about uh, this time last year, I was at home one night and we got a call asking if we could help in that. And we were hired by the um, trustee in the case to help him trace and to uh, figure out who had been involved in that kind of thing. So for the last uh, you know, 12, 13 months, we've been actively involved all around the globe in looking for assets, in uh, looking for causes of action, and trying to recover proceeds for the people. Uh, on a personal note, where I live in Palm Beach, Florida, in the United States, that was directly involved in that community, and it stripped literally billions of dollars out of there, and it's been a worse factor on that economy than the economy has. Do you think there is someone like Madoff in Hong Kong? For sure. There will always be Ponzi schemes, get-rich schemes. I think, uh, without going into the details of the case, I think we've just had a, a retired partner of an accounting firm uh, disappear with, um, with, the client, with, a, with, a, with apparently with a lot of clients' money. I'm afraid this is a downstream consequence of, of a bad economy. But even in a good economy, people will, people will try. I like to say that, frankly, there's been a no outbreak of honesty in Asia recently, and it's pretty unlikely this year, too. Well, we all know China is up and coming, but then it's not a country um, open to the foreigner. Do you think it's very difficult to do the due diligence? No, on the contrary. Uh, yes, it's not easy. And of course, if it was easy, anyone could do it. But for us, it's one of our primary markets. Um, our, our people are local. We have boots on the ground. We have handled hundreds of assignments relating to due diligence of, uh, as, as it relates to investments, political risk. Uh, and now we're beginning to do more and more outbound cases, uh, um, money leaving China, looking for homes and acquisitions in the United States and Europe. So yes, it's challenging. Uh, it's not easy. Not everybody can do it. But uh, that's what we do for a living. And uh, I think we're well positioned, the right place at the right time. Yeah, our business at the end of the day is about information and intellectual capital. And the more difficult things are, the better for us. That's really the barrier to entry in our business. So this is an exciting time for us because literally there are many jobs that we are one of very few companies that can do. And it allows us to associate with the most interesting matters and the best clients in the world. We have enough new technologies nowadays. Do you think the new technology help your work or is going to create more trouble for you? No, no. I think there's... Uh, you know, it's, it's at the core of almost everything we do now. I mean, we are um, able to go around the globe and do uh, evidence searches to search hard drives to even more importantly than the gathering of information, we have technological tools that are our proprietary products that help analyze and use the data. So data doesn't mean much unless you can really harness it. And in a typical situation today, you'll have literally hundreds of millions, if not billions of pages of documents, and we can assist people in really being able to use that in a meaningful way. 
Hong Kong has been slightly behind the, the, the A ball as it relates to electronic discovery or, or, or rediscovery. Um, this is going to change. Uh, litigation between large organizations will continue. Um, there will be discovery processes and there will be millions, of, as Jack says, millions of millions of emails on either side. You know, you need a lot of people to read those the old fashioned way. So I think we're well positioned with the right technology to be able to help out here in Hong Kong and elsewhere in the region because this is something that you're going to see change, I think, this year and next. That's really interesting. Well, Jack and Steve, thank you again for joining me today in my studio. I really appreciate it. And thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thanks a lot.